Let's get right into it. P-values. What are they, and why are they? P-values are found everywhere where statistics is used. Unfortunately, they are also one of the most commonly misunderstood values. So, let's take a quick but necessary look into them. Now, p-values are always found along with the hypothesis test. So, to best understand p-values, we will work with an example. Let's say they are interested in whether there is a significant difference between the number of men and women in the world. Given this, our hypothesis would be that there is a statistically significant difference between the sexes. We won't specify who has a larger population, which in statistical terms makes this a two-sided test. Now, we would collect data from a representative population to form our sample. After checking our statistical assumptions, we will end up with what's called a test statistic, which reduces our sample into a single number. With the test statistic, you would now be able to calculate a p-value. Let's say you end up with a p-value of 0.0141. Putting this into context, means that the ratio between men and women is actually 1 to 1, and the probability that we see a difference between men and women as as large or larger than what we see in our sample is 1.41%. Essentially we are saying it is highly unlikely we would have received the results we did if the difference between the sexes was actually zero. It is common practice to set a certain significance level beforehand, often alpha equals 0.05, which acts as a threshold of how unlikely a result needs to be in order for you to feel confident in rejecting the null hypothesis. With a p-value of 1.41%, we would indeed reject the null hypothesis using the standard significance level. However, let's assume that our p-value ended up being higher. If we're instead looking at p-value of 34.1%, then we should feel a lot less confident in saying that there's a statistically significant difference between the number of men and women in the world. There is more than 1 in 3 chance that our sample's observed difference could happen because of random chance. If we had set a significance level, then we would have an easy threshold to fail to reject the null hypothesis, but hopefully it's clear that we don't necessarily need one to understand how unusual our results are. That might lead you to see significance levels as a bit arbitrary, and truthfully, they are to some degree. And the typical advice that p-values below 5% are always statistically significant it's a bit naive given that. A better approach is to be cognizant of your choice of significance level and how it affects the type and prevalence of random errors your statistical test makes. If you'd like more information about those different types of errors of hypothesis testing, I'll provide a link to a video I've created covering the topic in the top right and down in the description below. Statistical hypothesis testing usually takes the approach of proving or disproving the null hypothesis rather than directly working with the alternative hypothesis. It is very important to notice that while I use the words prove and disprove out of convenience, there is always a measure of uncertainty with statistical conclusions, so you can never be certain your results are true, only quite certain. Another thing I want to point out is that I was quite hand-wavy with us checking the assumptions of our hypothesis test, however I do want to stress that this is one of the most important steps that leads to the failure of many statistical tests if done incorrectly. In the end, p-values are an important statistical measure that allow you to easily quantify the level of uncertainty you have with a given hypothesis. However, as is common in statistics, it is easy for things to go wrong if metrics are misinterpreted or assumptions aren't met. Hopefully, now you can go forward with confidence in your ability to interpret p-values, and as always, provided more resources for further study. Thanks for watching.